start there. Why not? And then I'm gonna write something in the word. Genesis 3, 316. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall lower you. Amen. Let me pray. Father, we come to you with open hands, asking for you to work in us move amongst your church. I pray that you would give me the words to speak to your people this hour and the second hour. Praying for Mary Lou, give her grace. For Judy, heal her body. Pray for my mom that she would take care of this hematoma and he would heal her body as well. We thank you for the rain. Thank you you gave us rain this morning. Uh, we do not curse that. We give praises to your name and bless you for the rain. Speak, we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, so excuse my attire. My shirt is sopping wet. It's in my office hanging and getting dry. It's slowly drying. <laughs> So I, I want to make sure that just by way of, um, of reminder and repetition, uh, the setup of, of what we've been going through over the past few weeks. What are we, lesson nine? So this is going to be the ninth week. Uh, first, uh, understanding, remembering, grasping. God creates all things. This is his good design. This is what he's done. First, he created the male role, which is uh, true. Uh, the words that we use, or word we used, headship. 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 He has responsibility. And authority. Okay? And then female. Helper. Helper. Submission. She's also a guard for us. Whatever it was, it was something like that. What? 
A guard no. protector, she... No, she's not a protector. She has no, 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 not in that way, same way. No, there's, there's another... I don't remember where it was. Okay. I left my Bible. So female role, helpers in submission to the responsibility, to the authority, the responsibility of the headship of the male. When both are equal, and created by God, no inferiority. It's not about inferiority. It's about the role that they have. And Michael introduced us to fall, which brought us to the point of rebellion. There's rebellion against God's good design. First, the male. Distortion. Now we can go. How is it distorted with the male? He's given up his. So passive? Yes. That's one response. What's the second response? Mean. Mean. <laughs> Abusive or passive? That's how it's become distorted. We looked at that last week. Right? Um, they were their husbands. Instead of submitting and yielding, women now have fallen desires to control. today. What, what's the word for it? Feminism. That's the word. Any uh, thoughts, comments so far that we, what we've looked at? You know, just listening to this, I had a couple in my line yesterday that were fighting because she wasn't happy with what he was doing. He was going, helping her store get stuff. She was in line. He goes, you're not appreciative of anything I do. And I'm sitting here thinking maybe that's kind of role reversal. <laughs> that's an inflammatory statement, too, of anything. Does anything and everything work always, never? Those are bad <laughs> words. Those should be uh, those should be four letter words. <laughs> never use always, never use never, never use anything or everything. Any other thoughts, Colin? The desire of women to control and conquer men has been sent has been seen in recent history of the feminist movement. A little history to this. Although I'm kind of speaking to the choir, um, the Women's Liberation Movement of the 1960s, Betty Friedan, or is it Frieden? Frieden. It's Frieden, that's what I thought. Uh, I'm sorry? She was a co founder of the National Organization for Women. Uh, she wrote, Betty Friedan wrote, The Feminine Mystique. How many of you read that? Have you read that? Have you read that? Have you read that? Have you read that? Interesting. Any guys read it? I've heard of it. Read it. Read it. Yeah. yeah. Heard about it. Um, she diagnosed the suburban American housewife as suffering from trying to live up to an unrealistic ideal of femininity, which she called the mystique. This unattainable, unattainable mystique left women feeling trapped bored and depressed in their role as helper, wife, and mother. 
She says this, a woman can only be fulfilled if she had a life plan for herself that included education, a career, and work that was of serious import to society. Being a wife and a mother was demeaning to the feminists. They perceived the root of women's problems to be the man. Exactly. Yeah. Have you read the book? I remember it. Did I remember the, the whole era. <clears throat> did Anne read the book? You'll have I wonder to ask she her. did. That would be interesting. Frieden's feminist ideas were spread through uh, consciousness raising. Uh, it's kind of like a big word for gossip. <laughs> Mary Cassian, she said this. Um, she said, feminists in New York discovered that if they gathered women together in small groups and got all those women talking about their hurts and grievances against men, then all the women in the group would begin to get upset with men. Even those women who didn't have any hurts and grievances themselves. Amen. That's right. And then their anger could be directed into action. Yeah. Brainwashing. Yeah. Well, that's, that's another way to put it. It can be brainwashing or gossiping. I, just, I thought that was interesting. Um, so they used this method of gossip and peer pressure, and the feminist ideas they spread quickly. Um, there's some forms of feminism still today. They're marked by bold, aggressive abandonment of restraints as women reject any form of purity and use their sexuality to manipulate men uh, um, through the name of empowerment. Um, some find themselves enslaved to degrading and immoral sexual practices, leaving the protection and of men and of marriage. Um, take your Bibles, go to Romans chapter 1, if you will, Romans chapter 1. Chapter 1, go to verse 22. Somebody read for us Romans 1 22. Professing to be wise, they become fools. And then, oh, you can go to read verse 23. That's fine. And exchange the glory in the in incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of the birds and four-legged animals and crawling creatures. And notice verse 24. Somebody read verse 24. Therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, the dishonoring of their bodies and of themselves. So what happens is, we've looked at this before a few weeks ago, that um, there's a suppressing of the truth of God and exchanging that and that's exactly what happens and then God gives a motive to degrading passions um, and that's what you see this this form of feminism that's very bold and aggressive there's also softer forms of feminism that still exist which actually exist in the church we're going to talk about that in a little bit but really um, here with, with feminism, what is the root of females wanting to control and conquer? What is the root of feminism? What does it work itself back to? Rejection of God's authority and design. Yes. We speak of feminism always, it's just within the winter culture, it's always interesting there's huge uh, hypocrisy in that they will rail against something in particular content, context and completely accept or keep silent on that same thing if it's in a different context. Like what, give us an idea. Um, just something that they perceive as being anti-female and derogatory towards women. If it comes from a conservative political 
side mm -hmm. they will rail against it where in the same instance it could be the same exact thing if it is done or talked about or comes from a liberal ideology there will be complete silence on that is there an example of that in the AC? yeah <laughs> women joining the military because oh. Because you're that that's the same word is that's voluntary ranking yourself under your husband. That's bad. But you can join the military and voluntarily rank yourself under commanding officers and that's good. That that's makes true. no sense. <laughs> it's just certain a lot of things that come up in the news and whatnot where mm -hmm. where you know these, these feminists will come out and rail against it. And almost an identical situation can come out where it says if it's so they use it, they use it to um, address their own, uh, to advance their own ideas, mm -hmm. or reject it. You know, and, and just keep silent on it if it doesn't. So it's just, like I said, it's uh, I, I can't point to specific incidents, but a huge bit of hypocrisy. Feminism, we've just looked at how it leads to sexual promiscuity. What else does feminism lead to? Divorce, broken homes, fatherless, family. Divorce. Mm. Fatherless family. I would say a weakened, weakened family. The, the big Probably. thing that they uh, the big thing that they push is that you as a woman can have it all. You can have a career. You can have a family. You can have children. Hey, and lots of young people that come out of those families, girls, they they sleep around until they get pregnant because all they really want is a baby. They don't want a man. They want a baby. Mm -hmm. And then they dump the guy. What else does feminism has feminism? Presidency for his hand. Yeah, okay. that's for uh, sure. Another abortion. Another abortion. And gutless men. They've been emasculated and they won't stand up and be what they're supposed mm -hmm. to be. She's in our age group, so she went to school, she became a lawyer, she was assistant DA, um, and then she got married, she had started having kids, and I'll never forget her saying to me, I was sold a bill of goods because I can't have it all. I can't do justice to my job and my family and, and my children. That's right. And that was coming from a non-Christian. Wow. These things, they flow out of a desire to give women the same so-called sexual freedoms, these things, as men. Uh, kind of go back to what you said. They want the baby, but not the man. It allows a woman to avoid the responsibility resulting from sexual activity, or to take that responsibility reference to the kid, but not even have to worry about the man. I wonder, Paul, the, the thing I brought up earlier, I wonder how women would view men's sexual promiscuity. Probably in a, in a fairly negative sense, but then hold and reserve that right for themselves in a positive sense. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Debbie kind of was pulling us in this direction story from that gal. What are the lies of feminism? Start your life. You need your own life and career. What are the lies of feminism? Submission equals slavery.
submission is uh, you're weak, you're inferior. Same thing. Same thing, yeah, but I think that's something that's equal. What's that? Unequal? Yeah. There's unequal, but, um, and then, um, you're worthless. If you're under a man, you're worthless. Well, one of the big lies, too, was it, this wasn't, this was about equality. It's always been about equality, but that's not true. It's all about we're going to be more equal. Yes. Is that, yes. It's all about destroying the family and destroying Christ's church. You're destroying the image of what Christ and the church is. That's what it's really all about. That men and women are fundamentally the same. In every way, shape, or form, more better. Women. What about dependency? What's the lie about dependency? Men are not dependable. How's that? Well, that you don't need a man. You can raise a family. You can have children. There's no need for that. That's shameful. <clears throat> dependency. It depend on anybody. Um, <clears throat> women sought to be free from men, especially the authority of the husbands, and the need to care for children. Uh, this is marked by a rise of women in the workplace, a decline in birth rates, and the widespread use of what do you think? Birth control. Birth control, true. Daycare centers and nannies. Um, I, I would love to see a study done. Gover government promoted daycare. I would love to see a study done as to when this whole thing happened with feminism in the 1960s and how that shifted everything economically. Pushing it to the point where now you almost have to have two salaries coming into the home. Does that make sense? Yeah. Am I, yeah. Am I making sense when I say that? Versus how, you know, earlier on in the 20th century, uh, there was only one income that was taking place. So I wonder how that, when you start having women now in the workplace and, and started having them be really dominant in that workplace, how that affected uh, the country and the world, but specifically the U.S., how it affected us economically pushing us to a point where that's why everything started to go up in price. I, just, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying that. I, I would just, it would be interesting to see if a study has ever been done about the effects of that. It would be interesting. I mean, demand goes up, therefore prices go up. Right. Prices go up, therefore you need to make more money. A friend of ours, kind of large ministry down in Phoenix, um, Larry and Sue Wright, and they wrote a um, track called is anybody home? I think that's the name of it. And um, they they just said, you know, it's not like you think it is because the woman goes out and gets a job. Now you have to have an extra car. You have to have more insurance. You have to have more clothes for the woman. You have to pay for the daycare. When it's all said and done, you're not coming out, you know, ahead financially like you think you are. Right. It was a really good track. And of course, they taught women. Roles, submission, and husband's roles, headship, and they're quite great in this room. Interesting. Who's to blame? Another lie of feminism. Stephen. What's that? Men. 
man. Passive man given up. Or really what's the other way to turn is, is others. Um, it's others' fault for my insecurity, for my discontent, for my unhappiness. It's his fault. He's the reason why I'm unhappy. He's the reason why I'm not content. Um, there's a general denial of personal responsibility. Blaming others. Which really comes down to Who's number one? Me. How did that song go? The Mary Tyler Moore show? You're gonna make it. The hell is that? It was interesting. I, I, I encourage you, um, ladies and you. Uh, this is one of the resources that they had. I listened to about watch 20 25 minutes uh, I'll put it right here can you read that true women true, woman true woman dot com look for the, just do a, a search on, you've come a long way, a baby. long way, baby. There's a message there by a, a, a gal, where she actually goes through this whole thing, actually walks you through, it was quite interesting in her introduction, she actually walks through, <coughs> leave it to beaver, which moves into Mary Tyler Moore, which moves into Murphy Brown, which moves into Sex and the City, and just those TV shows he had in each of the decades, and how it really showed a shift within uh, American culture uh, towards really the feminism and pushing feminism. Uh, so I listened to about 20, 25 minutes of that. It's, it's about almost 50 minutes, so it's, it's quite a long message that she has there. Um, but it's at a women's conference, a true woman. I think it's called True Woman Conference. Um, it started in the 50s with so, Disney. Because it always played the dad as an idiot. <laughs> really. And the kids were the smartest thing around. I mean, they've been, it's, many of them are just like that. Just being selfish. So now you have women sin against men, men sin against women, everyone sinning against everyone else. <laughs> the cycle is repeated over and over again in male-female relationships, and it continues today. Um, let's kind of get to some good news. Looking at all of this, what do women? Sorry, what do women need, and what do males need? What do we both need? Each other. <laughs> it's true. The gospel first. The gospel, specifically in reference to the gospel. We need a heart change. There's a rejection of God's truth. We're redefining things according to our feelings, not according to God's truth. But there needs to be a heart change. There needs to be a renewal of the mind, a renewal of the soul. Uh, go to uh, Romans chapter 12, even though he's speaking specifically here to believers. Um, there's still an important aspect in reference to Romans chapter 12. And, and go to verse two, 1 and 2. <clears throat> Just thought we'd use the right politicians and laws. Unfortunately, no. That's just icing on the cake, I guess. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Who would read that for us, please? 
I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So according to verse 2, how can you not be conformed to the lies of this world? What needs to happen? You need to renew your mind. Um, in the ESV it says, by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. So how do you renew your mind? It must be done by Word of God. Testing, testing it against the Word of God, against God's Word. God's Word is a standard. And that's where we come to the fact that we need a heart change. We need somebody to change our hearts. We need God to change us, change us from our distortion, from our rebellion. And that's where the gospel comes in. Because God took on flesh, was perfect in every way, died on behalf of sinners so we can be renewed, so we can be restored to what this was. Remember, this, this was all before the fall. It was the fall that messed us up. How can we bring this back? How do we do this? It's through this need. It's through the gospel. When God has a new humanity, <coughs> He changes our hearts. So now, now we embrace Christ. We turn from sin and embrace Christ. And the practical way you see that is you begin to embrace the roles that God has for you. Males begin to embrace the role that, that God has for them. Females begin to embrace the role that God has for them. Um, you know, interesting how this goes back to being selfish. Philippians 2, 5 says, Have this mind among yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind? Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Don't be selfish. Be selfless. Which was in Christ Jesus, who although he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave, being made in the likeness of men, being found appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Hey, well, our, our sinful culture has even redefined what love is. Completely. Mm -hmm. I mean, our culture, love is selfish. Yeah, it's about me. me. Yeah, I mean, uh, biblical agape love is completely the other direction. Interesting. How, oh, according to God's word, submission is the path to glory. Because he humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, also God highly exalted him, bestowed on him the name which is of every name, in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, those from heaven and earth and earth the earth. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Submission is submission is glorious. It's not means you're inferior. It doesn't mean you're worthless. It's not shameful. It's glorious. We have some time for discussion questions. I really want to get to these discussion questions. This is going to be more fun. Even more fun. So we've looked at all this. Let's we'll start putting some uh, some ligaments and flesh on this, on these bones, some muscles. Is there an appropriate independence women should have for men? Is there an appropriate independence women should have for men? If so, what should it be? When they're single and they're in the need to work in order to fight for themselves. Taking that responsibility? Yeah, good. When they're married, they, they take care of the kids, they wash the clothes, they go to the market, they do all those things. That's, he doesn't have to be a part of all that. 
Okay, I'm, I'm, that's true. And you can help in it too. I'm thinking more though, if you have a woman who is, again, she's independent from a man. Is there an appropriate independence women should have from men? No, Depends she's on the circumstance. Like what do you mean? Well, my husband didn't work for from 87 to 2006, so somebody had to bring in money. So then that kind of made it where I sometimes thought I was... In charge? Yeah, because mm. I brought home the money. Mm. Interesting. That's interesting. That's a long time. I, I think my... Yep, that's hit a long on, time. Uh, that's the, uh, the appropriate independence. I mean, that woman would still be in submission to her father, submission to the elders of the church, mm -hmm. but yet... Um, has no male headship in it, any partner. So there's, yeah, that element. And your husband couldn't work, correct? Physically? He was no, to. he hurt himself, but he didn't have any money coming in either, so. But he physically could not work because he no. hurt himself. Okay. No. And he didn't, when we moved over here, he, he had some delusional idea everything was going to be better, that some miraculous way he was going to be able to work. And I, that's weird. <laughs> but in that way, he wanted to move over here, so we moved over here. So. But he still wasn't able to work? No. She doesn't even think of a point like that, though, when, when your husband is not a believer, and your, your wife would be independent in her beliefs if she was a Christian. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's good. There's certain things being involved in ministry of the church. There's a appropriate independence we can have from men. And yet, how would you describe the kind of independence that is not appropriate for women to express? Like take, for instance, ministry in the church. Women pastors? Okay. What if you don't, what if you have a church that doesn't have women? Is there, is there a uh, kind of independence that's not appropriate for women to express? Deacons, elders. Right. Some teaching situation. Mm -hmm. Some counseling situation. Mm -hmm. okay. Not just offices, though. Right. Um, I've been in churches. I passed in the church. The, the person in charge was a woman. Um, wait, wait, what did you just say? You said you passed a church but a woman in charge? But the person well, in charge that's, she woman? thought she was in charge, yes. Mm -hmm. She was the head of so the it board? Was, this, is, this is always going like this. And her husband was an elder. She just hated the gossip community. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> See, and that's why I mentioned, what do you do in a church that doesn't believe in women elders, doesn't believe in women deacons? When I first came here, um, first Southern Baptist Church, it was called Momentarian. It was just in the doctrinal statement. But there was three who were in charge, and they were not men, they were women. How'd they let you in? I have no idea. I have no idea. The will of God. Amen. <laughs> There's um, wanting to be in charge, uh, pushing for my own rights, and that temptation that could be there, like there was for you, Tim. Um, the idea that uh, women saying, not not the same for you, Sam, uh, women say, you can't tell me what to do. Is, is there an appropriate uh, ministry that women can have towards women that doesn't necessarily have to have, it can be independent of men? Yeah. But is there total independence? No, because those women should be under what? Male authority. Male authority, specifically under the authority of, of their elders. And the elders, they go, yeah, go do that. And they say, yeah, we will minister, but we want to follow your leadership and be under your, your authority. Yeah. Do you think a 
it's appropriate. I think like if I had an idea to kind of share it with an elder and see what he thought, I think that's being more like a helper, yeah, like we've been discussing great. and stuff. Yeah. One can be great at that. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's a thought I have. Yeah, it just has to be done in an appropriate way. Mm -hmm. Instead of going about, do you need to do this? Right. Or hey, stupid, come here. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, I didn't even within the church. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't so much how you said it. <laughs> within the church at large, I mean, I'd bring up somebody like uh, Joyce Meyer. Uh, yeah. Is she submitting to that? See, you get such, those are easy examples. Now. Yes. What do you do when you're in a church that, that is supposedly complementarian, but they're not acting like complementarians? That's that's where that's where you have the rub. And that, that's what makes it difficult. Look at most of the women are probably going on the ground. They're not out in the open saying, "I think we should do this." It's always underground manipulating it. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on in the training. You put us in that direction. In what ways has this feminine movement idea thought process, in what ways has it sinned against men? Here's one of them. Where is it? Oh. What does it create men? Passivity. A whole sphere. What else? Confusion. And there's confusion. It's a, it, it undermines. You undermine authority. Undermine a husband's authority. Uh, um, authority in the church. God mm -hmm. Yes, God's good design. We talked about some of these as well, right? It can lead to divorce, broken homes. There's no children in the home. Uh, there's no fathers in the home for the children. Any other? <coughs> um, increased discontentment in marriage. Disharmony in male-female relationships. Unfair allegations of harassment? In what ways has the feminist movement hurt women? In what ways has the feminist movement hurt women? They've lost the male protection. Hmm. I've been noticing like in the military, the women have, you know, have to learn the same fighting techniques as men, but they don't have the strength as a man does. They, I don't think they can do the job. I think they're more of a hindrance than anything. Mm -hmm. But now they're made to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's just one example of losing a male protection. Mm -hmm. Other ones, I mean, other ways that the feminist movement hurt women? Well, statistically, they still do most of the housework and working, so now they kind of are doing it all, but they're not really doing all as well. And that's really good, because here they're, they're going after their career, but then they're missing an opportunity to do what with their children? Mm -hmm. Raise, Raise them, them, to nurture them. Uh, <clears throat> I was reading this book, I had to stop, Women's Ministry in the Local Church, uh, um, Lincoln Duncan with, uh, Susan yes, Susan Hunt. Um, great book. I'm, I'm halfway done with it. Chris picked it up, so I'm reading it now. Um, a great thing in there about how uh, women are made to nurture. Amen. They're made to nurture, and, and when you when that's lacking in a church, I mean, that's that's a huge sign that there's a major thing going on in the church because the women are 
not able to nurture or there's no nurturing taking place. It's a lot like living life without being saved. They're missing what they were designed to do and they don't know it. But at the end of the life, they're going to be empty. And their kids are going to hate them besides that too. Well, it goes back to that lie that you can have it all. You can have fulfillment and joy outside of your created role. And by the time a woman gets to a point where she finds out that that's not true and it doesn't work out that way, the damage, well, the damage has been done. Mm-hmm. And it's, that's where it hurts. And they, also go out, see it right off. and they also go out and work for a man, seeking to please him instead of their husband. Which ends up happening. Yeah. Which is quite ironic. Which goes back to what Debbie said earlier. You're in the military. Your commanding officer is a male. He's a colonel. And he's in your face. So you're okay with that. Versus your husband who's not coming up in your face. What are you doing right now, Private? Get down and give me 50 push-ups. Your husband doesn't do that, but you're okay with him doing that. That doesn't make sense to me. Does it make sense to you? Even our secular structures know that that God-given authority and submission role is the right way to do that. Interesting, too. I just thought of this when you just said that. Um, It makes me wonder if when you start having women being in combat, if all those things that happen in the military where they pretty much, they put you in a place where you shut your mouth and do what you're supposed to do, don't question anything, if that's gonna change. You know what I'm saying? And then there's gonna be kind of more softy approach towards the soldiers, and then they're not gonna be ready for war. Interesting, it'd be a good, interesting study to do. It's also like a rebellious teenager that charges up, I'm getting out of here, I'm gonna go in the service. They're going to get away from authority. Yeah, which doesn't make sense because... But society has almost always valued whatever is done outside that home bubble for money is more important. Women mending their kids' stuff, not important. A tailor, a designer, important. Women cooking for kids, not important. A chef, important. So probably yielding to your husband in a home, not important. Outside, the military getting paid, important. So it probably won't change that much. That's a really good point. Well, then what happens is there's a prejudice. So now, well, you're a stay-at-home mom? Oh, totally. That's been like that forever. Yeah. You're a For a loser. long time. Yeah, yeah. That a lot. Like, you're a loser, man. That, that's what I lived with, because this was all coming in. When I was a young mom, I was the only woman on our street that stayed home, and I babysat, but um, everybody else had a job. So I was made to feel inferior and it was the women making me feel that way <laughs> yeah not my husband not my husband <laughs> yeah. yeah randy's grandmother was very liberal um and in fact when they got married in what 1932 she refused to say um obey she refused to say oh, that to her wedding vows <laughs> so she taught her daughter and then her granddaughters that you you go get a job, you get a career, you do all this stuff. And then there's me that didn't go to college and didn't have a career. And then I have a daughter that comes along and she gets married uh, as, as young or a little bit older than I did, didn't go to college and she's just like, what is wrong with you? So I lived with this inferiority because I, didn't have those kind of goals. That's oh, interesting. Totally. And I went to college, and people were like, you went to college to stay home and do nothing? You're stupid. You're a yeah, loser. Yeah, you're a Yeah. And you, you're, you're put to a, in a position where, you're, where you feel that way. Mm-hmm. Not by your husband, but by other women. In Boston, that's where she well, was. Well, yeah. Well, it's just that the, the greater picture out there, it's like, look, uh, we're rebelling against God. Come join us. I mean, we are the in crowd. And if you're going to stand outside of that, you're going to endure persecution. I mean, it's, we're told that. If you're going to stand for that, if you're going to follow the right path, you're going to catch some flat. Yeah, that's true. Well, you can see at Walmart if you live there like we do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we live there too. <laughs> Not as much as we do. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's kind of like folks the man and the woman, neither one of them wants to bother, a lot of them, they don't want to bother correcting their kids. 
They let their kids do whatever they want, and whenever we say anything, they say, don't tell us what to do. We, that's our kid, and we want, we think, well, do something, stop them from doing what they're doing. <laughs> Throwing stuff on the floor, going, getting the ball, getting the uh, motorized carts. We have, we have that so much, and the young teenagers. Uh, I told son the other day, I said, that's for people that, that can't walk. And the young teenager said, I didn't know that. I thought, boy, you are right. dumb. <laughs> we have a CSM to run down the front end and chase them and make them go plug it in. Good. I've seen them run down, chase them, and plug it in. <laughs> but, the, but the parents, you know, they're doing their own thing. And they're not even watching the kids. That goes back to... I think maybe Susanna, you said that earlier. Confusion. There's confusion. There's no who, what, who does what, what does who, what, whatever. They both want to do their own thing. Yeah. I had a boy that was maybe four or five years old. His mother was ready to leave. She checked out. She was walking out. She says, "Come on." That little boy's body, whole body, was shaking. He goes, "I'm going to kill you." Mm. And the CSM goes, did I hear what I thought I heard? And me, me and the guest both said, yeah. Well, I'm sure he heard, he had to have heard that from the mother and the father. So, so here's, this is for you ladies, and then we got to be done here. This is a good conversation, it's good. This is the practical outworkings of what we're talking about. Um, for us as men, for God to give us the grace to have appropriate responses on our part that would help the growth and the promotion of biblical manhood and womanhood. But for, for you ladies, um, may this challenge you to cultivate a heart of respect for men. And then you can check your heart to see if you have a heart that despises men. And, and some... Uh, have a hard time with this, especially if they have to forgive hurts that were done against them by men in the past. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's hard because there could be bitterness. Um, there could be hardness of heart. Now, time out. It doesn't mean what the man did was right. I'm not saying that. Uh, but what I am saying is what he did was sinful and wrong. So he's going to answer that and God will judge him for that, and he should be judged for that, right? But your response, is there bitterness in your heart? Is there hardness in your heart? Is there a rejection of this in your own heart? That is sinful, that should not happen, but do you need to ask God to do a work in renewing your heart, renewing your mind by his words, that way you will embrace that rule that God has for you. Yeah, thank you. It could be... Well, like with me, there's a great fear of being under a man's control as far as mm -hmm. marriage. Because mm -hmm. I will not go back to what I had. Right. And there's great fear. You know, I understand that he's going to pay for what he mm -hmm. did. And he's a human being, and it's sad that he's like that. But on the other hand, I don't want to do that again. It, it's affecting you. And that's understandable because that's mm -hmm. a, for some women, there's an effect that that has taken place in their lives. And it's really being able to, here's the gospel. Here's my need for a heart change. God, do a heart change in me so that way I don't have to fear what you have because this is according to your good design, right? This, you, this is God doing a good design. This is something good. This is something pleasing to him. So help me, instead of fearing that, to embrace that. And then I'll let you take care of what you're going to do. That's good. Matthews, will you close our time in prayer? Sure. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the truth that you've revealed to us in your word. We know that it is not objective truth. It is black and white. It is not what we say it is. It is what you say it is. Father, we do look at your perfect design. We do realize how it is affected by the fall. And help us, Lord, to understand where we stand in that. How we should react to these things, how we should think of these things, to 
allow us to see our faults and how the fall has affected our thoughts and our actions. But Father, we are no longer uh, subject to sin. We do have power over it. And it is through your word, through the power of your Holy Spirit, and the work done by your Son on the cross that we are able to live life and, and praise you and seek your glory by living as we should. And we thank you, Father, for these truths that you have revealed. Uh, help us to live them out, to be displayed by the church, to be displayed by our families, between husbands, wives, and children. In this role of authority and submission, help us grasp all that. In your son's name.